Hey there, it's me again. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, Where the Birds Go to Fly by Jimmy Screamer Close a little bit longer, because I realized that uh, with the overview I've given about the film last time, um, I might have left something important out of it, because I did not have the time to properly um, explore the themes and uh, uh, the story that the visuals of the film communicate to us, as insane and absolutely far-fetched as they can get. Because, like I said before, uh, visually speaking, this film is absolute insanity, much like its uh, virtual predecessor, where the dead go to be die. These titles, <laughs> seriously. But unlike its predecessor, um, this film has some interesting points to make. And none of those points it wants to make are more clear, clear cut and effective as the point that uh, the character of the evil one makes simply by existing in this pseudo-religious, biblical, allegorical universe that uh, this insane characters inhabit, because at the end of it, she is the real main character. The story is really all about her. The message of the film is really all about her and what she represents in the eyes of mortals. And the young main character boy, instead, is really not that important. His own arc is completely inconsequential is just there to provide a gateway for the audience to get to the actual meat of the story, which is all about the quote-unquote evil one. And like I said, she is the physical embodiment of faith, a very particular kind of faith. I should say all kinds of faith. This want, this irrational want, this lusting over something that we cannot reach or quite have, something that we want for ourselves, but also everyone else wants. But our wanting of it is stronger than what the others want. Because, you know, as Schopenhauer says, we are all manifestation of the true will and thus we think our own opinion is more valid than everyone else. Schopenhauer and all that. The point is that she is wanted sexually by the humans. And uh, when the humans cannot have her, they would uh, most likely start to um, refer to her as the evil one, the devil. So they reject her out of hatred. There are those who consider her as a, as a proper gateway to get to God, so she becomes the Christ figure. It all depends by the point of view. She is uh, temptation and sin, but she is also um, faith and uh, uh, veneration, idolization. She's all of those things, but she is not all of those things because she wanted to. And that is the most important aspect of her character and what makes her a tragic heroine. She is designed by fate, by God himself, to be an object, to be loved by one. Again, God himself. But when everyone else starts to desire her, again, as an object, that is where a cycle of death, cleansing, more death, and repeat, at infinitum, starts. She is the epicenter of it all. The temptation of the flesh, the uh, drive that pushes us to believe strongly that our wanting of something is more important than everyone else's. The defining object, keyword object, that pushes us into violence for obtaining that unobtainable object. And she does not want any of it. She is literally designed to be that, to be fetishized, 
to be ostracized, to be hated, to be desired, to be tempting, to be wanted as a propriety, as a sexual object. She is an embodiment of faith, and faith is paralleled with female objectification and sexual slavery. This is worth celebrating. This is the key central point, the focus point of centricity, if you will, that makes this film really clever and interesting and not subtle at all, but still fantastic and unique to witness. I mean, it's still not for everyone, it's completely insane, and it goes out of its way to revel in its pretentious insanity, but what it wants to get across, it gets across strongly, and it's all because of this character that emblematically does not even have a real name, she's not referred to as a name, to emphasize the fact that she's perceived as an object to own by all the toxic males in the universe. It all boils down to everyone being a jealous boyfriend and they want their girlfriend all for themselves. And that is what Faith ultimately amounts to in the brilliant satire by Jimmy Screamer Claus. I hope I made this point clear. This is my interpretation of the uh, decoupage of madness, that is where the birds go to fly. And I hope you enjoyed these uh, further thoughts I had about um, Jimmy Screamer Claus surprising uh, geniality with the subject matter. Again, one more reason to watch it. Go watch it. You will probably regret it.